Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, a folding beach chair. Well, I know it's not exactly the time of year to be thinking about being on the beach, let alone making a chair for it. But why not? After all, this is the time of year when you can get things made and have them ready for the summertime when you want to use the chair. Now for me, I'm going to be making this one out of pine. And uh, it's more to show the method of making this chair. We're going to find out if it holds a guy like me when we test it a little later on. But for now, if you want to make it out of something a little stronger than pine, like maple or that sort of thing, then please feel free. We're going to start off though with some three quarter pine. Well, we have some three quarter by 48 inch pine. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to square up this one edge so that we can get a nice flat surface to run through the table saw. Well, now that you've got that one edge jointed, you're going to need four pieces and they are going to be an inch and a half wide, three quarters of an inch thick and 26 inches long. Well, you've got those four pieces cut and those are the rails of our chairs. Now we need to cut the slats and the support pieces. And for that, you're going to need to square off another piece of pine and rip it to an inch and a half width by three quarters thick. And we're going to need 13 pieces that are 14 inches long. Well, the next step that we want to do is drill our mounting holes. And for that, we're going to use a 1 8 inch pilot bit to drill right through each one of these 14 inch long slats, as well as a countersink in it. We're going to center it on our inch and a half piece, and we're going to have the pilot hole 1 and 1 8 of an inch in from the end. So I've set up a stop block, I've set up my fence, and it's just a matter of taking the time to drill all the holes. <laughs> Well, you have the first seven slats drilled centered on the inch and a half and an inch and an eighth in from the end. So the last six pieces, you're going to set up your stop so that they drill the hole still centered on the inch and a half side, but only three eighths of an inch in from the end. <laughs> So get all of those drilled up and then when you get that done, then come back and see me. Well, there is one last thing to do to get our pieces prepped and that is in one end of each of our 26 inch long pieces, we're going to put a chamfer on each one of the corners, just on one end. And you can do that at the table saw. And that, my friends, is all the pieces that we need and all the preparation that we need. So now it's time for the assembly. Well, the first step of the assembly here is quite possibly the most important. And what you need is two of your 26 inch long pieces and one of your 14 inch pieces. And you're going to line up this one piece right at the end just like this. It's going to be flush on here. It's going to have a three quarter of an inch overhang on either side. And what you're going to do is you're going to glue this in place, drill a pilot hole and put a screw down in there, making sure that this is square. If you get it square or once you get it square, I should say, and it's all screwed together, I would let it sit and dry because of course you're going to glue it 
let it dry, and then from there it will be dried in place square, and the rest of the setup or the rest of the assembly is easy as pie. So let's get that set up and done, and uh, once we get that, we'll come back to the rest of the um, assembly. The seat has six slats. The uh, backrest is only going to have five. So same half inch spacing, same everything, three quarter inch overhang, and uh, we can glue this all together and screw it together with five slats. And that is the backrest done. There's two more pieces that we need to put here on this. And the first one starts off with one of our 14 inch slats. It's going to be mounted with the same three quarter inch overhang on the outside, but we're going to mount it four and three quarters of an inch up from the bottom of our chair legs here. So I've set my measuring gauge here to four and three quarters, and I'm just going to place a mark here so that we know where to put our brace. Let me just mark this here. And we'll grab a square and carry that mark around. And now that line will represent the bottom of our front slat. So in the same fashion that we've already done, a little bit of wood glue here. And we'll place that right there on the line. We're going to check for a three quarter overhang. Get it right on the line there, three quarter overhang, just like that. And once we're happy with that, we'll screw that one in place. And then do the exact same thing on the opposite side. just like that. And just for the heck of it, we'll check it to make sure it's square. And we're good. All right, so now there is one last piece to put on and we just want to flip this over now, just like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to mount another 14 inch piece, but we're going to do it nine inches from the bottom. So just like we did before, we'll take our measuring gauge that we made a while here on the show, set it for nine inches up against the base here, place a mark, just like that, and then we'll transfer that mark onto the front face. If it wasn't for the chamfer of the leg, I could have put that mark on just directly on the face that we need it. So now we just need to get that last piece put on. And I don't know, do I really need to tell you how to do this? We've done it for the entire chair and it's the exact same process.
Well now, just like we did with our backrest assembly, we're going to assemble our seat. The difference here is that our seat gets glued up with our 14 inch slats flush to the edge of our board here. So I'm going to screw this in place, check it for square, and then we'll screw in the other side. And that side looks good. And we'll just do this side now. There we go. Now we'll check to make sure that this assembly is square. And just like we did with the backrest, I would suggest letting this set up so that it makes your assembly that much easier. So once that's dry, we do the same thing that we did, a half inch gap in between each of the slats, and we're going to glue them in place and screw them. Keep checking it for square and make sure that it's lined up flush along the outside edge. And now carry on with the other four slats. Now with all the pieces made, how does it go together? Well, it couldn't be simpler. Basically, this piece slides over top of this piece until it finishes inside like that. And there, my friends, is your chair. Well, I could probably get used to something like this, but the big question is, what do you do with it now? Well, when you're done using your chair, you basically pull apart the two sections and then from there, they just nest together, just like this. And that's it. Grab it here by the uh, handle and walk away with it. And there you have it. A folding beach chair summer lounge chair, whatever you want to call it. It's a folding chair and it's pretty darn cool. Guys, this project uh, sort of leaves itself to serious modifications. Um, for me, if I were to build another one of these, and I just might, I think I would make the actual backrest of it a little higher. And although that would uh, expand or increase the amount of space that it took up while folded, it would also give a much more comfortable seat to lean back on to support my upper back and that sort of thing. I would also make it out of maple. Um, this one was out of pine and it was out of pine for a couple reasons. One, pine is cheap. Two, I was only really doing it for demonstration purposes and uh, also as a test to see that it would work. And sure enough, it works. So for extra strength and extra safety and security, I would definitely make this thing out of maple so you don't have it collapsing on you when you're using it. Honestly, guys, it's a lot of fun. It's a great project and uh, it really opens itself up to the beginner and how uh, they can apply themselves to a project because this is a project which you don't need um, a lot of power tools to use. It can be done by hand. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's show. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so that you don't miss notifications of future shows. Thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.